So let's now talk about the two main indications that we prescribe erythromycin for in the United Kingdom, and those are acne and rosacea. So we'll begin with acne. So acne is an infection of the hair follicles that is classically present within teenagers. Let's explore it a little bit more. So I have actually tried here to draw a little picture of the skin. So this is supposed to be the outer layer of the skin, the epidermis. This then underneath is the dermis, the supporting layer of the skin. And then what we have here is a hair follicle. So the skin indents in like so, and then the hair would be present in this gap here going outwards. And then this structure that I've drawn on the side of the hair follicle, this is a sebaceous gland. Now, our entire body is obviously covered by skin and most of the skin of our body has hair follicles dotted around. The two exceptions to that are the skin on the surface of the palms of the hands and the skin on the soles of the feet. This, these areas of skin are called glabrous skin and these are free from hair follicles. However, the rest of your skin has ha hair follicles dotted around the place. Even if you can't actually see the hairs, they might be tiny and not visible to the naked eye, but they are there. Now in other places of the skin, the hair is much bigger and you can actually see it. So for instance, in men, the facial region, uh, the hairs are large enough that you can see them and that's why men have beards. However, even on the facial area of women as well, they do still have hairs in those regions. They're just so small that you can't necessarily see them with the naked eye. Now, those hair follicles have these glands on the side of them called sebaceous glands, which secrete sebum into the hair follicle, which lubricates the hair follicle. Now, in the teenage years, what happens is driven by sex hormones that start to be produced, the sebaceous glands get bigger in certain areas of the skin, in particular in the facial region, in the chest region, and on the back. The sebaceous glands get much, much bigger and produce more sebum. And the problem is that this sebum can then end up becoming too much and clogging up the hair follicles and those hair follicles then get infected by bacteria and get inflamed and that then is what produces the appearance of the red spots. They are inflamed, infected hair follicles that have occurred because of the overactive sebaceous glands. That is the condition called acne and that is why it occurs predominantly in teenagers because their hormones are driving the sebaceous glands to produce too much sebum. It's clogging up those pores, those hair follicles, and they're becoming infected. So the best treatment for acne is a drug called Roaccutane, proper name isotretinoin. So Roaccutane is just a brand name, a very famous brand name, whereas the proper name for the drug is isotretinoin. So this is an extremely famous drug, an infamous drug even. Uh, it's a drug that can be prescribed by dermatologists to people with extremely severe acne and they normally take it for a five to six month period. It's taken every day uh, for, as I say, a five to six month period. And the way it works is it shrinks down the sebaceous glands whilst they're taking it to tiny sizes so that their skin becomes completely dried out. And it normally completely gets rid of all the acne that these individuals have because of course, the sebaceous glands are the ultimate cause of the acne. Their overactivity is what clogs up the hair follicles and causes them to become infected. So if you shrink them right down so that their output is hugely reduced, then the whole problem is taken away. The pores don't get clogged up with sebum and don't get infected and therefore you don't get these inflamed lesions, inflamed spots of acne. So this drug often does completely get rid of acne and even often when people come off the drug, their sebaceous glands often don't grow back. They stay at this tiny size. So often it completely cures the disease once and for all. So it's an incredibly effective treatment for acne. The problem is it is seen as rather extreme. It's not a nice drug to take Roaccutane. It's usually seen as a last resort. Um, it has a huge number of side effects and often some of those side effects don't go away once the drug is taken. It dries the skin out completely, it dries the lips out completely, it dries the eyes out often uh, completely. Um, so it's not a nice drug to take at all, it is considered a last resort. 
So oral erythromycin is another treatment option for acne that is less extreme than Roaccutane. So it would be lower down on the treatment ladder for acne than Roaccutane. So you'd get to it first, you'd trial it first, and only if it fails would you then go on to Roaccutane. So the way this is going to work is the individual with acne is going to take the drug twice daily, every day, and they're going to potentially remain on that for months to years indefinitely potentially until their hormones have settled down and their sebaceous output has settled down so that they've effectively grown out of the condition. So how's it going to work? The drug is going to be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and then it's going to be distributed all around their body. In particular, some of the erythromycin will end up in their skin, in their hair follicles. And this means that even though their sebaceous glands are still overactive and they're still clogging up the hair follicles with sebum, that that clogged up hair follicle now won't get infected by the bacteria because the erythromycin is there stopping the bacteria from growing. And therefore, the hair follicle won't become inflamed because it's not infected and you won't therefore get the inflammatory lesions of acne. Usually oral erythromycin is quite effective at treating acne, however, it is not the first line treatment at all. It's actually quite high up the treatment ladder itself, so I'd just briefly like to talk about other things on the treatment ladder of acne that come before erythromycin. So let's say we have a teenager who's developed acne. Often before they go and visit a doctor, they may go to a chemist and in chemists, there are a huge number of products that they can buy to try and uh, improve their acne. So they often start by buying some sort of facial wash, over-the-counter facial wash that they'll use in the shower. And the aim of this is just to try and get the skin as clean as possible. It's to try and remove as much sebum from the skin when they're in the shower as possible to try and prevent the hair follicles from getting clogged up by sebum. So that's usually what they start off with. Then, if that's not getting on top of it, and if it's quite bad, then they'll actually go and see their doctor about it. And often, if the acne is not too bad, and it's limited to just the facial region, what a doctor will prescribe is a cream that contains an antibiotic to try and prevent the clogged up hair follicles from becoming infected. So that's what we often start with. That's if you imagine the lowest part of the treatment ladder for acne, a cream containing an antibiotic. So for instance, creams containing clindamycin or creams containing benzoyl peroxide, which is a very effective antiseptic uh, molecule. If those don't work, then we escalate up to oral antibiotics. And erythromycin would be the second line oral antibiotic. The one that we would go to first would be a tetracycline antibiotic, usually one called the limacycline. So again, this is a daily antibiotic and the aim of it is to prevent the hair follicles from getting infected. So we'd start off with a tetracycline antibiotic, usually limacycline. If that doesn't work, then we would change to erythromycin. So it would be next up on the treatment ladder after oral tetracycline oral erythromycin. Finally, if that doesn't work, then we refer to a dermatologist. So all of these treatments we've talked about so far, the creams and tetracyclines and erythromycin, those are all prescribed in primary care. They're prescribed by general practitioners. However, Roaccutane can't be prescribed by primary care physicians. It would have to be prescribed by a dermatologist. So if you're getting to that level of the treatment ladder, then you refer to a dermatologist who can then consider prescription of this oral retinoid. So that's the basics of the treatment ladder for acne and where erythromycin fits into that treatment ladder.